Okay, I'm here with Lindsay Starling, the Lindsay Starling. And we're about to do a look, a signature look for her. It's what we're gonna call um, punk rock pixie. Yeah. Um, we're gonna give her a smoky eye. We're, we're, actually what we're doing is we're creating a signature look for her because I think it's time. Um, I haven't known her that long, but I think it's time. Uh, <laughs> to create a signature look time. for her um, so that when she does shows and stuff, she has that signature look. So yeah. we're gonna do a, a iridescent purple smoky eye, really dark black around the, at the base of the eye. So it's smoky, but in a very fresh, fun way. And then um, just make her skin look really pretty and glowing and define her lips without any color so that they just glow and then give her cheeks a subtle flush to add to that pixie look. Awesome. A lot of that just went over my head, but I'm sure I will <laughs> did, get it. Did it shut you down? <laughs> it shut me down. <laughs> um, but anyways, for all of my subscribers, this is Robert. He's an amazing makeup artist. He's done, well, he does Selena Gomez makeup, Cindy Crawford, Claire Danes, and now he's gonna do my makeup. So I'm pretty excited about it and we're gonna see what happens. Okay, all right, so we talked about textures and what you do and don't do. Mm -hmm. I trimmed the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Tortured me is what he means to say. <laughs> okay, so um, let's start with some foundation. Now, do you put your foundation on before you do um, your eyes? Yes. Okay, I tend to, to do some of my foundation and go back and do the eyes and then finish the foundation. Oh. Just because when you're doing a smoky eye, lots can drop. Oh, okay. And so that way it's fresh. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna foundation your forehead and it can seal your eyelids. Now, it's always best, even with your um, pot that you do over it, your bait, shadow base you use, uh -huh. it's good to do a tiny bit of concealer over your eyelids so that all your shadows will blend better for you. Okay. Because the pot will make things stick so that things won't blend quite as easily. Oh, really? Yeah. And when you're doing a smoky eye, the blending is, it's all in the blending. Yeah. So just at the forehead. We'll come back later. And then the eyelids. Now, I guess this is kind of in combination. You know how you were using, you know, how Lindsay's currently, for those of you at home that know her signature look that she does when she performs, which is not bad. I just want to make something more stereotypically her. She's using a dark, a medium, and a white. I think the white is too light. So we're going to adjust that. And then we're going to do a purple mixed with we're just gonna add a little more color, make it more fun. Let's first get the eye going. And so I'm gonna use this translucent -y white okay. powder. It actually has a bit of a highlighting to it with no shimmer, which is really great for stage and like when you're doing videos and stuff because they'll give the skin a glow. Without shining. Without shining, yeah, because if we add shine to your skin, it's gonna show skin texture. And there's, sometimes there's things on your skin we don't wanna see with everybody. Yes. And then I'll use a, a normal shade, just a natural shade on the rest of the face. I put it high your eyelids and then I'm gonna powder the rest of your face with just a normal press, uh, loose powder. Okay. 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 So we filled your brows in a little bit. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of a cream shadow Because I like to layer my highlight shade on top of a cream because it makes it more of a pop. Uh -huh. And because we're doing kind of a pixie punk rock elf, I am going to just highlight right here, which you were doing your whole lid when you were trying to get smoky. I'm just going to do right here. Okay. Right in the corner. Right in the corner because it will soften the smoky Kay. so that we won't close your eye in. So we can get all that drama we want without it you know, being too much or closing the eye in. Mm-hmm. So that's where you put the light? Yeah, that's where I'm gonna go back over it with a light shadow. But I'm just gonna take a little bit of your white and mix it with a beigey shimmer. Do you like matte finishes or do you like shimmery? Um, for your middle color, your mid-tone, I call it the mid-tone. Mm -hmm. I like matte always. The rest, I'm kinda open to anything. Now, I do think that with, um, the smoky eye. I like for this highlight to be a shimmer mm -hmm. uh, and I'm using like a flat dense brush. Anytime you're, you're um, laying a color down, like just putting it in, not blending it, the stiffer the brush, the better lay down you're going to get. Okay. If a brush is 
fluffier and softer and moves more, it's going to blend more. Okay. So just whenever you're using brushes, like for instance, I'm blending the midtone on, it's got a more of a give to it when I'm laying it down. So I'm just laying the highlight color on. Right. Um, okay, so I'm just going to take, if you're going to mix shadows, which lots of times I will, um, like sometimes if I want more opaque coverage, where this is more of a, it has a sheen to it, doesn't it? Never mind, I'm not using this. Um, I am going to mix a white, but it's going to be matte, Okay. with a beige shimmer. Okay. When you're layering two shades, the first shade you touch is on top. The second shade you touch is against the skin. Oh, okay. So depending on how you want the layer to look. So I'm going to touch my shimmer first and then my matte white. I'm just going to go right over that. So it, we get the lightness, because I know probably why you went to white is because you're so pale. Mm -hmm. And so you went straight to white, but white by itself with a sheen to it is just going to be so harsh. Yeah. Against the darker shades. And then I'm going to highlight your brow bone with a matte beige by itself. No shimmer. It's kind of in style right now for the... Um, lid to be more highlighted in the brow bone. Okay. So do a more subtle highlight on the brow bone, which I'm just going to use like a matte flesh color on you. It's just this light creamy color. And you just barely put it below it? Yes, it only belongs right at the arch of your brow. Just right there. Okay. Good luckily, to know. You, luckily you get to watch the video to see. Yeah. yeah. If I did highlight all across here, your uh -huh. brow would be sitting up there by itself. It would be like eyeshadow, white streak, brow. Okay. So it's kind of like racing stripes. So, that's <laughs> what so I've been doing. <laughs> Dang it! That's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. Why I'm here. Yes. And so, I'm just gonna get right there so we get the highlight. Now, like you, I like to have lashes on pretty quick in the process. So I'm going to curl your lashes and do my first layer, my first layer of mascara. Okay. Look down for me. How many layers do you normally do? Um, just one. Oh, Lindsay, Lindsay, where have I been all your life? <laughs> also, when you're doing your curling, if you'll do walk it out to the end of your lashes, you'll get more of a curl rather than a crimp. Gotcha. Which is why I'm going to send you a different eyelash curler as well, because the one you're using is going to tend to make it just crimp because of the rubber piece. Gotcha. That's why I was appalled. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he did. He looked at my eyelash curl and he said, what Really? Is this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> People. <laughs> uh. Okay, then I have like this little detail one I like to use. Whoa. So I can just get corners. Where if one lash didn't get in there for some reason. Cool. Girl, I'll hook you up. I'm going to send you some tools. Like a lot. That thing's scary. <laughs> okay. And look down and over that way. I'm gonna wait till I'm finished to say what I'm about to say. I've never pinched anyone, <laughs> but I didn't want to say it <laughs> while I was doing it. You wanted to let me squirm. No, I, no, I just <laughs> wanted to say it because if I'd said it while I was doing it, I might have pinched you. You know what I mean? Like, it's always that way. <laughs> now, your if your first layer of mascara is waterproof, it's gonna help the curl last longer. Okay. Enough, you know that. Did not know that. Is your mascara waterproof? It You've did been not. using. Yeah. Probably because my makeup remover is not very good, and so I always I hate Couldn't fighting get with getting yeah. it off. And my your makeup remover isn't even getting off non-waterproof. Oh my God, girl, <laughs> girl, <laughs> I've come just in time. <laughs> appalled, he's not appalled. appalled. No, oh God, you're so like most girls. You just don't know. If yeah. you don't know, you don't know. Look down for me. So I'm gonna start my first layer of mascara. You've got really good lashes. Ooh, thanks. They've probably saved you from all your mistakes. Because good lashes can hide a, an asundry of boo-boos. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 80% of your makeup. That's funny. And I'll send you home with a list of yeah. products you can get today. Look awesome. Down. Except I think I may have to get that one purple because I don't know that... I'll have to see if they still make it. If they still make it, it's not a big issue, but if not, I'll have to use my sources to get you your pixie color. Okay, um, now we're gonna start with our middle color because that starts to create the, the smoke. Right. Um, let me see the texture of yours. I think I'm fine with it. 
Let's see if mine's a little smoother. What I'm looking at, for those of you at home, is I'm looking at how smooth it goes on. I'm fine with either. Okay. Um, because that's a lot of it, too, is um, an eyeshadow is easier or harder to work with. And some of the formulas of this company, I won't say who, um, don't go on smoothly. Really? Do, yeah, it's just their formulation. It, it's supposed to give you a different payoff, and I just think it's hard to put on. Gotcha. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use that because it's a good shade, so you might as well, we might as well utilize it. Um, now, I'm going to start with a fluffy brush because remember, the more fluff it has, the more it blends out, whereas it does, if it was stiffer, it would lay it on. So I'm going to take this color. I'm going to start at the base of the lash line because we want, with a smoky eye, you want the darkest shade against your lash line, and then you okay. want it to slowly fade away. Okay. And that's how it looks more natural. I mean, not that a smoky purple eye looks natural, but that's how it <laughs> has a more natural gradation of color. Because yes. the deeper it is at the lash line, the more it's going to define your eyes, which is great for you, like on stage and stuff, because that really helps from a distance. Mm -hmm. But then you want it to gradate, gradate out in color. So I'm going to start at the base of the lash line, and I'm going to work it all the way across, then blend it up. And what this is doing is it's because the first place I lay my brush gets the most at color. Mm -hmm. and then as I blend it up, it fades away. And you can feel where I'm going in right here. Mm -hmm. This is making your brow not sit up there by itself. So you're going to bring it all the way across. This is one mistake that a lot of girls make, that they don't bring their mid-tone up high enough, which you were talking about the fact you do bring it up above your crease mm -hmm. normally. I don't, always, I don't bring it all the way in, though. So that's yeah, you need to bring know. it all the way in. Well, I'll actually have to let you, well, you'll have you to look at, I was going to say. Our live webinar on Saturday was Smoky Eye Class. Now, what I always do is I have an empty, clean brush, never any color, never add any color, to go back and blend. Because if you try to completely blend with the brush you applied your color with, you're just going to make mud. Because mm -hmm. you just keep spreading color and spreading color and spreading color. Now, this is kind of what, you know how we were talking about every day? You don't really do much eyes. Uh -huh. I'm going to show you in a second with a mirror how just a little bit of a medium color like this, which could be your bronzer, and you don't have to do it this perfect, but just brushing a little color, mm -hmm. what it will do for your lid, even without that highlight, with your lid shape for every day. See how just that little bit of color? Yeah. So if you just did a little bronzer where I did that mid-tone, because it's mm -hmm. already on your brush, just took a, and it would start to push it away. Cool. Yeah. Okay, now the fun purple. Okay. I'm going to start with this iridescent purpley shade, same okay. brush. And I'm just going to do the same thing I did with that color. The reason why I needed that middle color first is because we got to ground all this color. Mm -hmm. And this is a nice sheer purple. And we'll do a little bit darker purple on the lid. Now I'm going to switch to a smaller, more detailed brush to get a little bit more of the dark purple on. And I'm just doing a little bit of dark purple, starting at the lash line, working it across because that way we get gradation of color. Uh huh. Did you just shut down by me saying gradation of color? No, gradation. It means okay. It's slowly getting lighter, right? Yeah. Yes. If you'll just pat it on where you want the de intensity and then blend it out with a big fluffy brush. Mm 
Okay, now instead of using gel liner, which is fine when you're just lining, but I want to smoke it out, mm -hmm. and it won't smoke out as well. Okay. I'm going to start with pencil. Okay. Open and look down for me. And in order to line, in order to get your eye in the perfect position, sometimes it's easier if you lay the mirror on the table in front of you and look down into it. Mm -hmm. You always do this after um, Yeah, mascara? because, um, yeah, pretty much, just because I've already got a layer of mascara on. Starting to evolve. Smokeify. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking a little dark shadow, black shadow, up and look down, now look down. And I'm just pushing it right at the base of the lash line. What this does, in a smoky eye, you don't want any lightness at the base of the lashes because that unsmokeifies it. And this makes your lashes look thicker. Ooh. And nothing's better than that. Look down for me. So you put it underneath it? I'm right in the roots where they're growing out of your lid. Pushing it right in there just so it really intensifies. Okay. Cool. Okay, so then I'm taking a wide flat brush. It's my number 18. and taking black shadow. I'm laying it at the base of your lash line, and I'm just smudging out that black liner. All I'm doing is I'm laying it there and pulling it up. Okay. Lay down, pull up. Lay down, pull up. Sorry, people, I don't mean to get in your way. Sorry, Lindsay, when you're watching this, I don't mean to get in your way. A couple of videos said, get his head out of the way. <laughs> get his head. Like, well, I got to see. Yeah, that's the only thing. Look down for me. And I'm going to clean up underneath your eye. When I get through with your eyes, you're going to see why I do this first. That okay. way you don't have to worry about it. Because yeah. you really want to get color on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush, I'll take a skinnier handle, and I'm just going to brush along, along your lashes to knock off any shadow that may be laying on them. Hmm. Because I could clean up to my heart's content, but as you blink, if there's any shadow left on them, it would fall on your face. Okay, now I'm going to conceal, look up. test your concealer to make sure it's the right color. Okay. Is this like a less creamy one that you're putting on right now? No, it's actually a more creamy than yours. Oh, okay. Um, for under the eye. Less okay. liquidy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, well, it doesn't dry as, as, um, it doesn't dry as matte as yours so that it's better for the under eye area. Okay. Because, like, you shouldn't be putting this underneath your eye. Okay. You can put this it's one because it's creamier. Okay. Because that's where you have lines and stuff. This is just going to accentuate those. Okay. Good to know. I'm learning all kinds of don'ts that I do. <laughs> okay, so my favorite video is the shadows video. And okay. you obviously dance really well in it. Do you have dance training? You know, I actually don't. Um, when I... Too light, by the way. Oh, too light? But uh, I have always absolutely loved dance, and, but when I was a kid, I begged for violin lessons, but I also begged for dance lessons, and my parents were like, we can't afford both. There's that was my mom, no too. I only got one. Yeah, so it was pick your, pick your thing. Yeah. So I picked violin, but um, I've always just loved dancing, and so when I wanted to kind of merge violin and dancing, I started watching YouTube videos, YouTube tutorials on how to moonwalk, YouTube, I would watch like you know, so you think you can dance clips that were online and I'd like watch their dancing and be like, oh, I can do that move. And I'd learn the different little dance moves and start choreographing my own stuff with things that were just done with your legs. <laughs> well, it's good because with you playing, you know what you can and can't do and what movements are going to hinder your playing and what aren't and all that kind of stuff. Definitely. And it kind of allowed me to start really basic because at first I just kind of would jump around and play. And then slowly I developed, you know, okay, now I'm going to try to glide. Now I'm going to try to do a backbend, you know, just. Yeah, the backbend is 
pretty wild. Yeah, I don't even. Of course, though, the distance you have to go to reach the ground is it's a not lot. That. That's not as far as some others. Five three. Yeah. <laughs> but it is pretty incredible for you to uh, dance the, the, or play the whole time you're back bending like that. You know, I, I hope to get even better and just continue to increase all of that. All right, taking a little bit of that that translucent highlight powder with no shimmer, putting it underneath the eye. Because whenever we highlight the face, we want to highlight underneath the on top of the cheekbone, forehead, and tip of the chin. Okay. Because it makes everybody see the oval area of your face. So kind of, so here, here, here? Yeah. Especially when you're on stage, it's going to be great because yeah. it just gives kind of a... What do you call that stuff? Well, I'll ask oh. you that later. I'll put it in your kit. <laughs> okay, so when you started young and you started performing and you said you're trying to earn for money, is that the main thing that really pushed you to get more into the performance mode was earning money for college? Well, I joined a rock band. Oh, sorry, do you want to talk about this? Yeah, I'm going to use a little bit of bronzer. I'm mm. going to use a pink base bronzer instead of a yellow base, bron uh, orange base bronzer because you're so pale. Okay. And so it'll be better for your skin tone. So mine's probably orange, very orange. Yeah, it is very orange. And so it mm. actually makes you look orange. And so I'm using it. <laughs> I'm using a shade that I actually created with this company that had, because I'm so pale and I uh -huh. have to wear bronzer on, on screen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I totally. forgot to do my own makeup today. Oh, sorry. I'm shiny. I'm red. Um, so mm -hmm. I wanted a bronzer for pale skin. So you see how this is like a neutral brown? I created that one as well. I created all three of these. Okay. This is for bronze ebony skin. That's like a neutral brown. See how orange this is compared to my neutral brown? Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't give you any orange. And so this is a pink based one So because you're so pale. Okay. Good to know. Again, I can hook you up. I need pink. More pink in my life. Ooh. It's amazing the difference a bronzer makes. <sighs> you go from this, like, palette of white to just, hmm. Okay, so I'm starting the cheekbone area. Oh, that looks so nice. And then blending up and blending down. This is why I'm, when I do my makeup, I always do my foundation and bronzer first just because I'm like, oh. <laughs> I can look at myself in the mirror once in that color. I have life in me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a dead... Uh, Oh, but you can see how, how intense it goes on you, so that's why it's so important that it have a pink undertone versus that orange. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, it looks like a natural glow for your skin versus being orange, which you would never have because you don't have olive skin. Yes. Okay. Now, I, your nose isn't big in any way, shape, or form, but when you're on stage and even on film, every, and then on camera, your face gets flattened out and the face is not flat. And so I like to take a little tapered brush strong color huh oh, we want the pink yeah and I'm just gonna go right down your nose and it's not to make it smaller or bigger or anything it's just to give it shape on it's film fine. yeah gives the face shape so I'm just using a peachy okay because it gives you a glow smile and you're applying it to the apples of the cheeks uh -huh. because that's where your glow would be created and then I'm just gonna go back with a big fluffy brush that's clean it's to pat my powder brush and just okay. blending it out yeah, lots of brushes are needed to make. Well, not lots, because I have more out than I've used on you. It's like you narrow it down based on your eye shape, what you do, blah, blah, blah. There's less than what I have out. I just have, I just was prepared for anything because I didn't yeah. know what kind of look we we're going to create for you. I wanted to yeah. learn more about you so I could kind of get in your psyche because yeah. I don't want to create a look that isn't you. And that's what I think so many people do. Like someone will paint your face and they'll do it like gar animals, like they just paint a certain way. Yeah. And it's so much about bringing out who you are and what is unique about you versus just what I want you to look like. Yeah. True artist. Okay, so now I'm going to take a little point brush. It's my number 13. And the reason is, is I want a really tight line by your underneath. And so the fact that it has a point but it's beveled out, uh -huh. it will create a line but it will smudge it all at the same time. Okay. Now whenever you're creating darkness underneath the eye, you want a gradation of color again because it's all about that blend. Yeah. And so I'm going to start with your taupey middle color, your mid-tone color. Okay. And I'm going to start to the definition. Now, so that you don't look like a heroin addict punk rock chic, um, I'm going to keep your darkness really tight to your eye mm -hmm. rather than letting it bleed down because okay. you're a pixie punk rocker. Yes. And pixies would never, ever be sloppy. That's right. And I just think also the tighterness, the tightness of it, I think looks more modern. Mm hmm. Rather than teenage girl that doesn't know how to do her makeup. Either that or like editorial because, you know, 
editorial really doesn't look good walking around every day looking editorial, smoky eye. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's too harsh. It yeah. looks cool in a picture. Yeah. But it's just not reality. Look up. She's so going right along with that middle color all the way across. Is the light too bright? No. It's tickles. Oh. You'll get over that real quick. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to take my 18 brush with no more new added color. It's the same black that I used the last time. It's left mm -hmm. on there. Okay. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to push right up. I'm going to go right at the base of your lash line where your lashes start to grow out of your lid. And the reason I'm doing this and not adding more is because this will be plenty of smudgeness on there. And I'm going to do one other little trick. Look up. That will give us the tight darkness. So it makes you look really smoky without it falling everywhere and going down your eye, underneath your eye. Okay, now I'm going to take my black eyeliner. Ode to the 80s, look up. <laughs> and I'm going to line that inside wet tissue. I don't do this often, but oh, really? for a smoky eye, it smokes it. It's something I'm into right now. You don't have to do this. I'm just going to lightly conceal away your natural lip line. Okay. So that I get a more perfect edge. Interesting. Because I'm going to do a little bit of a lip liner. Uh-huh. And then just a gloss. Now, for performance purposes, with any lip color you do, if you do a tiny bit of a really naked, nude lip liner, it will help whatever color you're wearing last longer while you perform. Because lip liner has a drier texture, so it stays on longer. Mm. Good to know. And I'm just going to take a super, super, super natural shade. Yeah, see, that's the kind of stuff I like. Yeah, just super natural, so I'm re just reshaping or reinforcing your lips to help keep that color on. And fill in a little bit, don't just line. Because mm -hmm. that's what's going to help it stay. I think I'm just going to do a nice sheer gloss. a pixie would have shiny lips. Oh, definitely. My mop. <laughs> oh. oh wow, that's really. I like that eyes a lot. Well, here, quit. You're gonna keep looking at that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So Woo. it's it's smoky without being edgy. Uh huh. Yeah. So you're so cool. Pixie punk rocker. Okay, we're gonna do our hair, and then we're gonna come back for the final. Um, okay, so do you think that this is something you could do? I think so. After I <laughs> study this this video, I think I'll be able to do it. And as y'all see, we just kind of like give, gave her back her signature Lindsay hair. We didn't want to take signature Lindsay out. Um, so <laughs> pick purple smoky eye, which can be worn during the day. That's the good thing is it's yeah. it's just something that like you could do during the day and not feel like you're blowing on a street corner. Yeah, I'm not. People yeah. aren't gonna double take. No, 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 exactly. All right, everybody. So go see Lindsay on her. All my people, go see Lindsay on her um, her channel, Lindsay Stomp on YouTube. Watch the videos. My favorite two is the shadow video, which is what's the name of the video? Oh, shadows. Oh, shadows. Okay. And <laughs> Bart kept bringing that for me. And then uh, the ice video, which which oh. is the most beautiful song. Yes, that it's called Dubstep Violin. The song is called Crystallize. All right, be sure and visit Lindsay and subscribe to her channel. Bye, y'all. Bye.